Well, again, I hope you're all safe and well. Um, we're still currently in a lockdown in the UK, so I thought it'd be useful, uh, whilst we can't go out anywhere, to cover um, two tents that I own and the differences between, because I do get asked a lot of questions on these. Uh, this one is the Hilliberg Acto, and this one is the Hilliberg Sulu. They're both solo four-season tents, uh, and they're at the upper end of the market, so they're actually quite expensive. Um, looking on Hilliberg's page currently, as of today, um, the Acto is £605 and the Sulu is £790. Now I bought this Acto uh, about 18 months ago and I actually bought it off eBay second hand. I paid £250 for it, it came completely standard with a footprint, um, all the pegs, poles and everything and there wasn't a mark on it. I have no idea how old it is but the green is slightly um, lighter than the current greens you get. Uh, there's no labels in there with um, the name of the lady or uh, whoever stitched it together and there's no serial number so I can't really trace it but I'd say, say it's a few years old. The Sulu I did buy brand new. Um, the Actos occasionally come up on eBay, not very often. Um, the Sulus very rarely come up and it is a bit of a gamble. Um, there are options to buy these tents from some uh, websites in the UK certainly where they offer interest free credit. Um, so you could purchase this say over a 12 month period or keep your eye out on eBay and, and take a bit of a gamble but they are expensive tents um, and that's the sort of elephant in the room with Hilliberg. They're expedition ready tents um, and like I said they're four season. I'll try in this video to point out um, what makes them four season in comparison to say a three season tent. There's a lot of information to get through in this film. I'll try to be as quick as I can with each bit, but please be warned, if you're not up to listening to a ginger person waffling, um, feel free to just click the uh, unlike button and move on to something more exciting. The next thing I'll cover is the weight. Uh, according to the Hilliberg website, the Acto comes in uh, at a packed weight of 1.7 kilogram and the Sulu comes in at a packed weight of 2.4 now that's completely standard with everything that they give you spare poles um, and pegs and bits and bobs um, however both of these have a footprint attached to them uh, I weighed these on the kitchen scales earlier this morning and with the footprint attached for everything standard in these bags as you see them now the Acto came in at around about 1.9 kilograms and the Sulu came in at around about 2.7 kilograms. Now the Sulu does have a couple of extra pegs uh, and two extra poles and probably a bit, quite a bit more material in there. So there is a difference between the two uh, weight wise. Pack size. Now you can see looking at these that the Sulu is quite a bit bigger uh, than the Acto. Obviously it's got more poles, more material there. You can compress these bags in when you pack them down and Hilliberg do provide you uh, with decent sized bags so you're not ever struggling to get them packed in their bags. However, there is a, a, there is a different way that I pack the Sulu to the Acto. Um, the Acto has some uh, little poles at the ends. I'll show them later in the film, but it means that you can't, um, you can't necessarily squish this tent down. So you do sort of have to pack it by rolling it like this. The Sulu, however, doesn't have those little poles. So most of the time, not all of the time, but most of the time, I pack the Sulu separately. So that's the bag of poles that you get with it. Now that usually goes in a dry bag on the outside of my pack, maybe in one of the side sort of pouches. Uh, and then this, uh, you can compress it down. Really small, sort of like the size of a football really. Now you can use the bag that it comes in, waterproof uh, it's pretty lightweight however a lot of the times and you may have seen it in my other film is they use one of these dry bags now people have asked me what size this is I don't know liters wise uh, it's a carry more bag uh, and the label says it's small I I'm guessing it's probably around about 15 liters um, but it's a decent uh, bag and because it's a because it's a dry bag where you roll the top what I find is it's easier once I compress it to get it in the pack to hold its size whereas um, this can come undone it is doable though and I just find that actually packing this uh, a lot of the time can actually be easier than packing something this shape 
Now, both of the tents come with the same type of pole, which uh, are DAC poles or DAC, uh, I think they're feather like poles. They're nine millimeter. Um, the Acto comes with one pole and the Sulu comes with three poles. Now you'll notice here on one of the poles there's red, um, red tabs on there. That's the shorter pole of the two. Um, and that's that becomes apparent when you erect it. That that red tab pole sort of goes over the uh, over the center rather than lengthways. Uh, both of them come with a spare pole and also a a tube, which you can just make out there with an instruction leaflet wrapped around the tube. Um, both of these tents have them, um, so you can use the tube to do a temporary repair on a pole if you're out in the field. Or in worst case scenario, you can replace one of the poles with this section here. Uh, it just means that you have to sort of undo the elastic and feed it through there. But they both come with that. Uh, they both have the same type of peg. They're very light. Um, those are the pegs there. The Sulu has 12 pegs and the Acto has 10 pegs. Um, like I said, they're both exactly the same. Uh, I've not used any different type of pegs and I've been out in some really bad wind conditions. And as long as the ground is okay, those pegs hold well. What I have had to do on a number of occasions with the pegs is once they're in the ground is I've put like a large uh, rock or boulder just on the top of it to keep the pegs held into the ground uh, firmly. Um, but obviously if you haven't got any rocks or anything around there you might you might want to look at perhaps getting some of uh, those large delta pegs but um, I've never used them and they've worked so far touch wood absolutely fine. The next thing I'll cover is the pitch time or erecting the tent time. Now I've never timed myself on any of these, so it would be quite interesting for me. Um, to give them a fair chance, I'm going to take my time. We've got perfect weather conditions, it's not windy at all. Uh, I will start with both of them in their standard form in the bags they come to give them a fair crack of the whip. So everything's packed up in there, everything's packed up in there. Uh, I will time them both and uh, I'll probably do a time lapse video of me putting them up to save time and then I'll post the times at the end so you can just see. Right, the time was 6 minutes and 56 seconds. If you haven't seen my other video, this is my youngest son Harley uh, and he wants to appear on the camera. So that wasn't rushing, I was just taking my time, perfect weather conditions. Daddy? Yes. Look, look, these flowers soft. Yeah, they're um, dandelions. Yes. Yeah. The most flowers. Yeah. Right, should we put the other one on? Yeah. Okay, now it's time for the Sulu. Right, I'm going to pause the video here at the moment because we have now got to a point where the Sulu can be used as a tent because one of the main differences between the two is the Sulu is a freestanding tent. So I've got the poles up, I've not put any pegs yeah. in the ground whatsoever, but to get to this point uh, is 5 minutes and 8 seconds. However, now I'll continue and put the rest of it up so it's fully pitched um, to reach the same point that the actor was. Okay, the time for the Sulu, uh, so to be fully pitched with all the guy lines, uh, which do take a bit longer, is 9 minutes and 6 seconds. Uh, my name's Holly and I love camping. He loves saying that. The next thing I'll briefly mention is the colour. Now, this is the uh, Acto in the green. As I mentioned earlier, this is a slightly older Acto, so the green is a little bit lighter than the current greens on offer. The Sulu is the sand colour. Uh, like I said, that's, that one's only a year old. Uh, the additional colours you can get are, or the additional colour you can get is red. Uh, I like to sort of blend in a little bit more. I find in most places the sand probably blends in a little bit better. However, if you're in like a dark woodland yeah. area, this green green works nice. But the, the newer greens uh, on Hillyburg tents are darker than this.
One thing that doesn't often get mentioned uh, with the uh, Acto and the Sulu is the position of the door. Now the Sulu, uh, the door is on the opposite side to the Acto. Now I'm left-handed, uh, so if I'm in the tent, I generally lean on my right-hand side and do everything with my left hand here. Now the Sulu is wider at one end than it is at the other end. I'll actually measure it now with a tape measure, um, just so you get an accurate. Right, so that's 26 inches wide, that end. And I've got that at 23 inches at the other end. Now I have seen uh, a lot, of, a lot of the wild camping YouTube videos where I would imagine the right-hand people they sleep with their head down that end. Obviously, the door is here, uh, so it is something you, you should consider. Now, it's still wide enough to sleep with your head down that end, and obviously your feet are going to be positioned here. Um, but it, it is just something to consider because I, I sleep this end because I find it's. It's probably handier having the wider bit and having your feet down the narrower bit. Now, if you see with the Acto, the Acto is the same width across the top and the bottom. Again, I'm I'm left-handed, so the door is positioned down the other end. It's not it's no great shakes because I still do things there, but it is something to consider. You can't order them with the door on the opposite side. This is the uh, this is the configuration you come up with. And that's 24 inches as well. well. Like I said, I'm not sure how old this tent and whether they've altered them or whatever, um, but it is equal both ends of the Acto. Now, one of the main differences um, with, between the Acto and the Sulu, and I think this is where probably the Sulu could be improved, is the size of the vestibule. So I'll measure this now, just to give you a rough indication. Uh, and that comes up to about 28 inches. Now the Acto has got a really good size uh, vestibule. I'm able to get in here with the tent closed up. Uh, and if I've got soaking wet clothes, I can take them all off in here. It's a bit of a tight squeeze, but it, I can do it. And I've actually done it with my pack in here. I've put my pack there, I've got in, I've taken my waterproof jacket and trousers off before I've even had to unzip the tent. Plus also it gives you a good cooking area. So I've had all of my equipment stored here and still being able to cook in this area. It's got a good height, there's a vent here, uh, and I can also store my rucksack, as you'll see in some of my films, sort of at the bottom of the Acto as well. Whereas the Sulu, because it's narrower the way I sleep, uh, I do struggle to get my pack down there. It is doable, but it's just not as doable as the Acto. Those couple of inches do make quite a bit of difference. Uh, for a point of reference, I'm five foot ten uh, and just medium build. Okay, so I, I'm pretty much Mr. Average. Now, bear in mind, I'm sitting on the ground here. There's no, there's no roll mat or air mattress which can add a couple of inches. Now, I can sit up in the acto, so I'm sitting up right now. But my head is pressed against the roof. Now, you can unclip the top that will give you a couple of extra inches, but you can sit up in here. It's just if you're doing it for quite a long time, it can be a little bit uncomfortable. And if I lay down, you'll see that there's not much space between where your head is and the roof there. And like I said, I, I'm not on any mattress or anything. So if I was lying on, a, on an inflatable mattress uh, and perhaps my sleeping bag as well, I'm going to be even closer to that. So when you're getting up and down, you do sort of, uh, brush your head against the against the roof of the tent but I, I've been out in this in the in the winter months when there's been like a blizzard outside uh, and I've managed to sort of pack everything whilst being inside the tent uh, put my wet proofs on and get out and then just finally pack the tent up so it is doable uh, it's just you are it is noticeable that the tent is quite close to your face there width wise so from the widest part of the tent That's 
65 inches. I'm sorry if it's not metric or anything, but I'm sure you could do a conversion on the internet there. So it's 65 inches. Now, um, be interested to see what the Sulu is. Now, the vestibule on the Sulu, as I've mentioned, is narrower. And it's quite obviously narrower. I mean, obviously, I got the two. Um, but I'll measure it for you, just to give you a rough indication. It, it comes up to about 21 inches. All right, I'm not sure if that tallies up with the Hillyburg website, but it's 21 inches. Now, that makes it seem a lot, just a few inches. But actually, the area it gives you does make a difference. Now, again, it's it's got the pole here like the Acto, so it's it's high-sided, uh, and I do cook in here, but what I find with this vestibule is I can't really get into it um, with my wet clothing on without opening the door, so I always bring a towel with me and wipe things down. Um, so if if I could ask Hilleberg to improve anything, if they just give us those couple of extra inches that the Acto's got, I think this, this tent pretty much um, pretty much perfect in that way. But it is still usable. You see plenty of my other videos where I cook in here and I have a table and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it's one of the main differences that I was quite surprised with after having the Acto and then getting the Sulu later. Uh, one of the main advantages with the Sulu is the head height. I said I'm five foot ten and I can sit upright in here and I can move around and I've got probably a couple of inches there above my head and I don't feel ever sort of hunched over in this tent. Um, those extra inches in this area here do make a lot of difference to your comfort, especially in the winter months if you're spending a lot of time in your tent. Um, so it's it's something to really consider. Now, for some reason, I do find the Acto uh, seems to be slightly longer, even though the measurements uh, on the Hilleberg website put them at the same. I don't know why, but it, the Acto seems slightly longer by a couple of inches. Well, I'll measure the width overall, like I did in the Acto, at the widest point. Now that comes out 58 inches. So what I find I do with the Sulu is, if, if I'm cooking and stuff in here because the weather's bad, I'll have all my, some bits and bobs here to cook with the table, this, that and the other. Um, but I'll have to have my rucksack here. Um, you could potentially squeeze it there, or if you're sleeping with your head that end, you could potentially put it across there. But I, I generally put it um, at the side of me here. There is, there is room. I mean, I've got quite a large rucksack. I've got uh, one of them, I've got a 105 litre. It does fit here fine. Um, but it's definitely not as wider as the Acto and the, the vestibule is, but it makes up for it in that head uh, head height. Now I've asked, plenty of people have asked me which of the two tents I prefer. Um, and I would say between the two, because of this less cramped feel, um, I do prefer this, um, if, especially if you're spending a lot more time in the tent. Now obviously it is heavier, it's more expensive. Um, but I just feel less cramped in here. So when I'm sort of moving around, Nothing ever feels as if it's touching my face or anything like that. And uh, if the wind picks up, you'll find that the Acto can, can squash down even more and it can even go onto your face. Um, and that can happen with snow loading as well. Now, I've not taken the Sulu out uh, in snow, but I have taken it out in some really uh, uh, bad windy conditions. Uh, you'll see some of my other videos where it's been out. Uh, however, I have taken the Acto out in a snow blizzard. Um, there was a little bit of a commu accumulation of snow uh, and all I found I did was I just tapped the tent every now and then and just kicked it off. But it's just something to be aware of. Uh, also, with the extra two poles going this way during windy conditions, it, the tent stays a bit more rigid. Um, but both tents are more than capable um, of, of putting up with some really strong winds. I mean, you see some of my videos in, in this tent where the wind has been um, pretty horrendous and it, and it was solid. Uh, I haven't really had the Acto out in, in really high winds, but um, there is a chap, Dave's Wild Camping, uh, his YouTube channel, he's taken, um, he's taken an Acto out in some, in some horrendous wind conditions. Uh, and as far as I'm aware, it didn't break. Uh, it flexed a lot more. Um, but yeah, what you can do with both of these tents is you can double pole them. Now, I've never double poled either of mine um, 
I don't think I've seen a YouTube video where somebody has double poled them, but each of these um, sort of sockets where the poles go in and the clips, although you do have to alternate them, so you could double pole them. You can buy 10 millimeter poles, but I think Hilleberg recommends the double poling method, which is probably a bit stronger. I mean, you've got two nine mil poles there. Uh, it will add to the weight, obviously it'll add to the price. Um, I've not had a drama with this. Uh, I've, I've seen people where they've just double poled this one. Uh, and I the way I put this up is I put this pole underneath the two lengthway poles. Um, but apparently, according to Hilleberg, it doesn't matter which way they go over. But that's just the method I prefer. Um, putting the centre one here underneath the two lengthways uh, poles there. Just a sort of point of reference for you. This is one of these uh, lightweight camper tables. One of my older ones, but they're all roughly the same size. They're quite popular. But I'll position it in the vestibule so you can see sort of how much space it takes up. It takes up quite a large amount of the vestibule space there. Same table, this is in the Actos vestibule. So you can see there's quite a considerable uh, amount of spare room there compared to the Sulu. Right, issues. I've not had any issues with the Sulu, however with the Acto there is a well-known reoccurring issue that I see coming up and that is in this area here, specifically by there. Um, they are known to start dripping on the inside. So what I did is I sprayed some Fabsil along here on the outside. So on the and inside then... here, let's see it, I put some seam grip and it's this area here. I think what happens is that is it wears the stitching and what you get is you'll start getting a drip coming through. So I've seam gripped it there, which I did, a, I did about a year or so ago and uh, up to now it's been absolutely fine, but it is a common issue on the Acto. On some YouTube films, I see people um, struggling or complaining about the door on the Acto coming down. Um, and it'll be because they're probably not quite sure how to roll it up. So you would naturally want to sort of roll it upwards. But actually, if you roll it from the side in the way that I'll show you now, um, it will stay up and it'll be nice and tight. There you go, that, that won't fall down. So from the side rather than from the base up, I hope that helps. One thing that will distinguish uh, a four season tent from a, from a three season or whatever, is that they should always have a vent really high up, almost at the highest point. Uh, and the main reason for that is, is if you get a build up of snow, you're still gonna have the ability to have fresh air get in there. So you notice on both of these tents there is a vent high up here. Now the Actos uh, is on the top here. So you can literally zip it down and it's got like a like a, a wire, bendy wire uh, snood that opens it up so allows the air in there. You can op open it up both sides and let a lot of air in. So if snow has built up, you're still going to have uh, sort of a snorkely breathing pipe there. Now the Actos, it does come all the way down, so you can open it really wide. Um, but because of the this vent here, I pretty much most of the time keep keep this vent open because the rain will just will just come off and it won't get in the tent there. You can close it all the way if you're getting snow blowing under there. Um, and Hilleberg have said that this black material here does allow. Uh, air, to, air to get through, so you're not gonna you're not gonna hopefully suffocate. Um, but yeah, if, if spin drift is getting blown through, you can zip it up there, but you still have enough event. Now you'll notice on the Sulu, it's got this unusual sort of cap here. Um, now this is like a rain cover that covers the vent there. So what I'll do is I'll unclip it so you can see the vent, uh, the upper vent on the Sulu. Now you can see it's the same dark material that uh, Hilleberg says is, is breathable um, and it, it can be I think it's water resistant as well probably not as much as this is uh, a couple of times I have had to close this because the wind has just been blowing horizontal rain under there but I would say probably 90% of the time 
uh, have it open. <laughs> so again, it opens down to there at that point, but on this side, you can open it further and allow a good amount of air in there. This one as well has also got a tie up here, so you can roll it up and then tie the toggle up there and keep it open. So on a hot day, if it's not going to rain like, like today, um, you, you won't need the, uh, the rain cover on there. But that's the upper vent and that's what makes these two tents a four season. Now the Acto has additional vents on each end, um, which can be closed. Or open fully like that. Now you can have them open fully even when it's raining unless it's like horizontal rain the rain will will come off and not get in in the tent you could tuck that inside but if you're having problems with snow and things blowing in there you can do them up and most of the time I sort of have mine say half done up so just in case the rain gets under there especially if it's sort of sleeping at night uh, and it's promised rain I might just do them up like that just for a bit of extra protection um, so that's where one advantage with the Acto is it do, does have one of these vents on either end, whereas the Sulu doesn't. Something else that determines a four season tent is that the fly sheet should go all the way to the ground, all the way around the tent, which it does on both of these tents. And that's obviously to stop, uh, stop snow. So you can see all the way around both of the tents the fly sheet goes right to the ground and if you're in really bad snow conditions what you could do is um, pile a bit of snow up around the base to create a sort of seal but obviously make sure that your upper vent uh, is open if you can just to get some airflow. Another four season trait is that the door uh, should be able to be um, fully sealed in other words material covering the door so this is the Acto door uh, you'll notice it's got mesh on the upper, however on the back of the mesh there is material there. Now on the Acto, what you can do, excuse me, is you can pull this, it's Velcro, and then you've got um, one of these uh, fly mesh or stops midges, very fine but it allows ventilation to come in. So if you can, as a minimum, leave that, leave that open. You'd only really need to close it if you're having some, uh, some really bad weather conditions. It still allows some air to get in, so it's not completely sealed. But if you're having some dramas with snow, or whatever, you can close that up. And it'll also keep the tent a little bit warmer. You do actually get a couple of extra degrees with that closed. But for the majority of the time, I have it open. And with the Sulu, you have the same sort of thing. Uh, so you've got a full, full material door there. This is fully closed. However, you can undo a couple of zips all the way down. And you can see that this is much bigger. It all, it goes pretty much down to the top of the ground sheet there. Same sort of mesh material, but this would allow um, a little, little bit more venting. So most of the time when I when I go camping, unless the weather's really bad, I sleep like this. So I have this this door closed and this one open, and then obviously I close the fly sheet there. And it just allow, allows a little bit more ventilation. Now regarding condensation, which a lot of people often ask, I think in a small uh, four season tent, especially you're going to get condensation, and especially if you're cooking in there or you're in there for a long time. Now what I found is. When I keep the doors open like this, or to be honest, even if they're closed, I do get condensation forming on the fly sheet on the inside here. But I've never had condensation forming on the inner tent. So I think as long as you vent it, you will get condensation on the inside of the, the outer fly. Um, but I've never had it on the inner tent here. Now, Hilleberg do recommend perhaps putting your waterproof jacket over your base of your sleeping bag there. Well, like I said, I've been out in these in all four seasons and I've only ever had condensation on the inside of the flight sheet. Just to point out the reason the uh, Sulu has got two more pegs than the Acto is in this position here. Okay, so the, the Sulu's got one peg either side in the centre there, while the Acto hasn't. 
So the Acto just uses the tension of the, the pole and obviously the strap above it to hold its position. In windy conditions, because there's no poles going the lengthways of the Acto, you can find that the wind pushes it down and obviously that can press against your face there. Now on the Enan, the pole is in the centre, there's one pole. The way the Acto works is there's poles inside here. Not sure what they're made of, they're possibly fiberglass, but they stay in there. You can remove them, it's a little bit fiddly and it's not recommended, but these poles on each of the, the four corners are the reason that you'd have to roll this tent um, rather than you having the ability to compress it down, like I mentioned earlier with the Sulu. Um, but it is possible to take them out, it's not recommended. I would just put up with the rolling method. Um, they go from this point here all the way to the floor there. Another point with the, uh, which is different with the Acto is the guy lines on the side here. They're just attached to the tent in these two places here. On the Sulu, you can see the upper guy line, the lower one is attached, but the upper guy line, you actually wrap it around the pole and then it takes the tension off the fabric of the tent. So the actual guy line, the upper guy line, holds the pole in place. And you do that with all of the upper guy lines around the poles there. So it is a little bit stronger and places less tension on this material in high winds. It does mean it takes it a little bit longer to pitch, which is why it's about three minutes more to pitch this. Um, but for that advantage there. It is possible to completely detach this sort of... Uh, cap on the tent you've got these toggles here you can tension them up as well it's recommended that you don't remove this because you'd end up probably losing it if you're anything like me you'd end up probably losing it so if you want to just unclip it and let it let it blow over but it is possible to remove that through those toggles there both tents have various uh, reflective strips around them so in the night if you happen to be using a torch, they, they really glow up brightly and they're all round the tent there. On the Acto, they're on, on the corners here. There's also a reflective strip on the hood by the door, so the door's easily identifiable. Same on the door here. Now also on the uh, on the hood, or the cap of the Sulu, see this black strip here, this acts as a rain gutter. So as the rain comes down, it'll hit this gutter and then it'll run along and then come off the side of the tent there. But just be aware, if you have got it fully open, it's, it's raining, it's gonna, it's gonna, the rainwater's gonna come off at this point here. When I showed you the poles for the Sulu earlier, you'll notice I pointed out the red tab on the pole. Uh, and there's red tabs on the tent. That just indicates that the shorter pole with the red tabs go into the uh, red material markers on the tent here, just for easy pitching. On both tents, uh, Hillyburg used this sort of rubbery material uh, which covers the zip. So in bad weather, if the rain is hitting the zip, it's protected um, with this material that goes all the way up. And there it is on the, uh, on the Sulu all the way down. Uh, here's my cat, this is Tubbs. Now the Sulu, I've had it for a year, I've bought it about a year ago. George, every time, that's my cockerel. Uh, the Sulu, because you never quite know what you're going to get, but I said I was going to get George, please, I'm buying, um, for example, the Nia. Sorry. So I'm paying the... I'm paying um, at the time I'm making this video... Uh... George! Bam! Bam, Daddy! Well, I'm left-handed. I'm on my right-hand side. Description below. Bam! So, on the rack. Got Alexa going off now. I hope this video has been of some use to you if you're 
trying to think of deciding between the two. If you've got any questions or you think I've missed something out, uh, please ask. I will reply to everyone in the comments below. But they're both absolutely cracking four season tents, um, which I, I will keep and use um, depending on the situation. Um, I've used them both for over a 12 month period. I've used them in all four seasons, uh, some of which I've videoed and put them on YouTube. So please feel free to have a look through any of my other videos. But like I said, if you've got any questions, please ask and, uh, and I'll try my best to uh, answer them for you with at least an honest opinion of how I found them. As ever, thank you for joining me. Please keep safe and I'll hopefully see you all again soon. Bye.